So I'm from the northeast coast of Brazil. It's an island called São Luís in the state of Maranhão, which is a beautiful place, but of course I'm biased to say that. But um, regardless, I I don't think I come from, you know, the usual um, biologist that always wanted to work outside and saw in the documentaries. It's sort of following the pathways of David Attenborough. <laughs> I fell in love with biology in high school and I decided to pursue that as a career and lucky me, we had a very If we travel back in time, I feel like one of my strongest influences come from my grandmother. So my grandmother is a professor, so is my mother, and so is my godmother, the three ladies that raised me and, um, you know, taught me almost everything that I know. But my godmother has this beautiful house with a lot of plants and, and her gardens. and. As you know, as far as I can recall, I was very young and we were always working on the gardens, just touching the dirt and planting new plants and, um, you know, replanting, changing vases. So that contact of being outside, I think deep down was always with me and it's still with me. So I started seeing biology as a career, of course. The moment that I started reaching that point that you decide to pursue a degree or not but I I always liked sciences they were like my favorite subject I liked the teachers and having hands-on experiences and I feel that was like the major inspiration although it sort of operated a little unconscious <laughs> within um throughout my life but I feel that um, most of the inspiration comes from my grandma and of course, that that joy of being outside, of, of being in contact with um, nature. Before I arrived at Temple, of course, not traveling too far back in time, but um, to my undergrad years, that started in 2008, basically. Um, I really engaged in so many different opportunities and experiences. I felt... When I started my degree in the biological sciences, I always had that, you know, um, I always felt compelled to pursue different pathways to find my actual niche and the things that within biology actually I was really passionate about. Because I feel when I started biology, I just liked everything. <laughs> so... It was, it was hard, right? I was young and having to decide already what, you know, specificity within the biological sciences I liked. So I always tried to engage in different experiences, but always from the perspective of gathering um, different experiences and not because I was necessarily um, not excited about the topics, right? So... Since my first year of undergrad, I enrolled in research, so I developed my personal, independent, uh, scientific projects, of course, being supervised by a faculty member. So I've worked with, you know, molecular genetics of pathogens in ballast water. I've collaborated with people from entomology labs. I developed projects on scent dunes vegetation, looking at the dynamics of how wind can affect populations of plants in the tropics. I've worked with um, leprosy, so hyperendemic diseases spread out around the world, which actually was very helpful <laughs> to understand this, you know, whole immunological background and, and, and the current scenario with COVID. But I did a lot of genetics work. So... After I finished undergrad and I decided to pursue graduate school specifically in the U.S., um, I started looking for places, right? Really exploring all the lines of research that I thought were mostly aligned to what I wanted to study. 
at that point I was really interested and intrigued about biological invasions and their impacts in marine life. So I really wanted to engage in something in that direction. So looking for professionals, I landed to this beautiful website of this um, researcher at Temple University called Dr. Amy Freestam. So back in the day, she had this really interesting proposal for studying biological interactions and biological invasions across latitude and, um, you know, what were the biogeographical aspects of those patterns. So I decided to apply because I was really highly interested in that line of research. Also, Temple seemed to be located in a city that I would, you know, adjust more easily because I, I looked um, on Philadelphia and the community and Philly is such a diverse place. You can find people from anywhere in the world, from, from different, you know, ethnicities and nationalities. And I was like, whoa, this is a really good <laughs> match. So one of the most fascinating things that I always tell people that I like about Temple, it's the diversity of the community. Regardless of more or less, regardless of the magnitude, it is a diverse community. It is entering a classroom and, and seeing different faces right there from different backgrounds, different ethnicities and nationalities. And that always really amazed me about Temple. It's how I could connect uh, to people that were similarly to me culturally, but also from people from cultures completely foreign to me. So I think we have to expand on that, right? We've been really engaging in discussions currently about how diversity is important um, for our life. Diversity is one of the main concepts in ecology. It's genetic diversity, it's biological diversity, but it's also diversity of social interactions. Thing, one last thing to add is that I feel like I serve as an example, right? Of somebody that was given the opportunity to study in another country sponsored by the government. And you know, really being able to grow as a scientist and to grow as a person, connect to people from other places in the world. And I come from a very poor state and uh, a place where science is absolutely amazing, where we have amazing scientists, but investment is still lacking, um, you know, it's lacking more investment in the sciences. But more than that, you know, even having this amazing opportunity and coming from a place that is barely known the map, I'm still a privileged person. Of course I acknowledge that. So I feel it's the time to start bringing opportunities to other people that are not represented in the spaces that we want them represented. And science is one of that. Education is one of that. So we have to start creating more opportunities for more people to reach, you know, the highest that they could reach from compared to the generations before them so that they can really create a, a world that the next generation can reach even higher places. And I'm not just talking about success financially or career-wise, it's to really look around and see we have this diverse community that we know exists in the world represented in the spaces. So it is different nationalities, it is different ethnicities, it is different backgrounds. If it's somebody that is, you know, the first one in their family to get a PhD, um, 
we have to see more stories like that, that they are not exceptions. Mm-hmm.